welcome to Jamaica News Online TV with Esmer's Austin and here's what we have in today's news. Teen gone down after playing football, furniture maker injured during home invasion, St. Anne health official warned against consuming certain meat products, no progress made in probe of Integrity Commission director shooting and Jamaica jolted by 3.7 magnitude earthquake. Details coming up right after this break. Are you tired of browsing all over the latest happenings in Jamaica? Discover it right here on Jamaica News Online TV YouTube channel. Foreigner home and you want to be in touch with the happenings in Jamaica? Guess what? 6 p.m. Ask and you shall receive, guys. So if you are watching this video, like, subscribe, comment, or share, hit that subscribe button. And remember to comment below with your thoughts. Guys, make sure you come back again and again to watch our videos. With a sombre expression glued to his face, an 18-year-old boy huddled closely to an older relative as he expressed his fear of venturing outside of his community of Tivoli Gardens. Over the past two years, the youngsters has lost two of his cousins and a neighbor to gun violence, all three were teenagers. Me feel bad and me cry a lot. Sometimes me feel afraid, me cry. All in a me sleep. May I dream about the killing them, and me can't forget them. My uncle dead four years now, and me can't forget him, he said. The youngster was among a group who were grieving the loss of their loved one, 17-year-old Tivoli Gardner High School student, Jermaine Mackenzie. Mackenzie, who also lived in Tivoli Gardens, met his demise in on Monday night in Denham Town, shortly after playing a game of football. According to the West Kingston Police, about 9.30 p.m., residents heard explosions along Blount Street in Denham Town. Upon the lawman's arrival, Mackenzie was found lying in a pool of blood. He was transported to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The teenager's mom, Joanne Williams, was a picture of grief. She barely spoke a word to the news team, but her pain was evident. During the interview, she sought comfort from her mother, Janet Powell, by sitting in her lap and resting her head on her bosom. Williams said she had told her son not to leave the yard, but he did not listen. Me just have a bad feeling, say something gonna happen, and me tell him don't move, she said. Powell's eyes welled up with tears as she recalled hearing how her grandson pleaded to, for his life as the bullets were being pumped into his body. Him keep a ball out, say, him a footballer, him wet up himself, uh, the way him did afraid and never want to die and them still kill him. Him was just a little boy, him have a speech problem, so him couldn't talk too good, Powell said between tears. She said she's yet to get over the death of another grandson, Narado Booth. The 16-year-old was fatally shot by the police in the vicinity of the Water Lane Bus Park in August 2022. Dozens of persons have lost their lives in an ongoing feud between Denham Town and Tivoli Gardens. Despite the gang feud, Mackenzie would often travel to Denham Town to visit family members and friends. His aunt, Dean, said it never once crossed their mind that he would meet his demise there. Him just done play a football league and go Denham Town to play a next game. Him always go Denham Town because him have school friends and family there. Him wasn't a troublemaker. Him just love him ball game. All him little friend them that live in Denham Town a cry hard. A long time this was a war gone and a lot of innocent people dead, a lot of youths dead as well. We see children from the other side come down here on a daily basis, but we no hurt them, she said. A 44-year-old furniture maker from St. Mary survived an attempt on his life after an armed man invaded his house about 11 p.m. on Tuesday. According to police reports, the man and his children were at home when a gunman entered through the unlocked front door, pointed a gun in his face and said, Are you my comfort? As he struggled with the man in an effort to defend himself and his family, it is reported that another man entered the house and hit the home owner over his head. The homeowner fell to the ground and his attackers 
fled before leaving uh, the armed man reportedly fired hitting the victim on his left hand the intruders escaped on foot the injured man was taken to the anato bay hospital where he was treated the anato bay police are investigating Health officials in St. Anna are warning against the consumption of certain meat, meat products, and dairy products. This warning comes after several areas remain without power almost two weeks after Hurricane Beryl. Chief Public Health Inspector for St. Anne, Leroy Scott, says several food establishments do not have the equipment to properly store these items amid the ongoing blackout. He says several pounds of meat have been confiscated. He has advised the public to be cautious of these purchases and to consume products including non-perishable and other shelved items once they have been opened. The public health chief said shelved items that require refrigerator must be consumed within four hours after being prepared. The police high command says it has not made any further progress in its investigation into last year's shooting of a director of the Integrity Commission. Ryan Evans, the director of Corruption Prevention, was attacked and shot in the car park of the agency in New Kingston on September 21st when he arrived for work. He was also robbed of a suitcase containing cash by his attackers. But speaking at a press briefing on Tuesday afternoon, Deputy Commissioner in Charge of Crime Fitz Bailey said Mr. Evans has not been cooperating with the police in the investigation. Whilst we are aware of the incident and we have sought to appreciate the complainant, to this date, based on the information I got from our investigator, the complainant has not given a statement. He refused from giving the statement under the pretext that he is afraid. That's what has been communicated to us. So we can't proceed or progress an investigation without a formal complaint. DCP Bailey appealed to Mr. Evans to make himself available to be interviewed and to give the police a statement so they can progress the investigation. Sections of Jamaica were rattled by an earthquake on Tuesday evening. The earthquake unit is reporting that the quake had a preliminary magnitude of 3.7 and was located approximately 10 kilometers south of Hope Bay, Portland. It was felt at 5.46 p.m. and had a focal depth of 6.2 km. The earthquake was reportedly felt in sections of Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine. Did you guys feel it? Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment down below.